Hello, hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today for this week's webinar. And if you guys uh, are signed up for this series, you know that for every single week, uh, till indefinitely, <laughs> I am supporting everyone that's going through any work transitions and business building transitions uh, in the time of COVID-19, um, where we're gonna be really brainstorming and learning and creating ideas together, even during this time of uncertainty. So every week I'm running a webinar uh, that is voted by the community on the topics that you most urgently want to learn with me. And we've ran two so far, today's the third one, uh, and today is all about how to use your time at home to create a service-based business, uh, where I think a lot of you, uh, this is I think our most popular um, episode or video uh, webinar for this week anyway, um, but we've ran two more from before. The first one was uh, how to use sort of remote tools to work from home. Uh, and then last week's was uh, for up and coming business owners and existing business owners on financial stability uh, during this time of uncertainty for business owners. So uh, if you haven't registered or even seen some of the uh, classes that we are running every week and that page will be updated uh, weekly as well based on community voting uh, is go, uh, go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars and you'll be able to sign up for past replays that I've already recorded and you can watch the ones that we've ran previously and of course register for new ones that will be coming up very very soon. Um, and for all of you who may not know who I am, and hopefully you do if you're part of the community, uh, I'm Lydia Lee, I'm the founder of Screw the Cubicle, and my work as a work reinvention strategist and a small business coach is really helping to support people to primarily build the ty types of businesses, right, and the models of working that aligns with the lifestyle choices that they want. That's always a really big um, mission for me. It's not just to build any business for you, uh, but to build a business that you care about, that is meaningful for you to do, right, and keep creating for, and of course, most importantly, to ensure that the way you're working in your business, whatever that looks like for you, is going to allow you to lead the life that you want to lead. And all those, um, those values, right, and those ingredients for what a meaningful life is for you is different for everybody. And my job is to help you align those pieces together and ensure that you're building something uh, that you love and not just something that anyone else is building out there. Um, so, you know, I think today's webinar is uh, very relevant to some of the skill sets that I think everybody right now has to learn, which is to be able to be adaptable uh, and to be creative, especially during a time where it feels like your jobs, right, or the opportunities that you've had traditionally may not be giving you the type of per per personal or professional stability that you're currently craving. And as also a freedom instigator, you know, my job is to kind of help you to understand what it feels like to be free to do the work that you love to do. What does it feel like to be free to carve out the right time for your families, for your adventures, for your passions, and still be earning an income anywhere in the world that you live or choose to travel to? Um, you might be wondering, wow, there's a lot of gold in your background today. <laughs> this is a new home that my partner Andrew and I have settled into in the last couple of weeks. Not the best time to move, obviously, during COVID-19, but we've had to do a move and we are currently temporarily in a friend's Airbnb uh, and it's called the Gold House. How fitting, right? Everything is quite gold and it's a very traditional motif of Balinese uh, sort of architecture and design, but with very modern day fixings. And we're very blessed to uh, be able to help my friend out who is obviously not having any tourists going to our Airbnbs. And it's a great win-win situation uh, for me and Andrew as well to be able to find a place. And I'm gonna see if I can try to show you the view, but I'm outside right now. So this is sort of the morning view that I get. Um, and of course, that also means that you might be seeing me extremely sweaty as we go through this webinar because <laughs> I am outdoors and I love facing something natural and having some great sunlight right now, which has been extremely important for my well-being. 
Okay, so let's get started on this. And I want to kind of start actually, um, this is more of less slides today and a lot more conversations that I'm going to have around uh, what to start thinking about and how you can start looking at ideas and opportunities to start your own thing and potentially be building your own sense of security, right? Wherever you may be, even if you're in uh, currently in a full-time job and working remotely from home or you're in transition or perhaps this pandemic has sort of challenged you but pushed you in a positive way to really start um, honoring some of these goals that you might have about being self-employed. And this may be one of the best timings to do it since we are all in a bit of a holding pattern anyway from home. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next few months and what better way to use our time right now uh, to do something for ourselves, right? To create for our own future and be in control of the things that could bring us joy and the things that could help us to increase our earning potential now or for the near future. Uh, but I really also want to start this uh, conversation with a bit of a caveat. Um, I, I know that a lot of people are in different ways of, uh, sorry, different stages of transition, and we're all coping differently when it comes to this crisis and the unknown of what's going on in the world right now. And I also want to sort of start this by saying it's okay if you're feeling the need to take a pause, pausing and slowing down right now to assess your life, to assess how you feel, to assess your emotions, is a very healthy thing to do. I don't want you to believe that just because you're not hustling or acting on things every single day because you need that time to build that emotional resilience to go through this uncertainty, right? All of us are doing that. I took off like three days last year, uh, off last week because I just needed that time to rest uh, and recalibrate and really to think about what's meaningful for me to put energy to because these days I feel like my energy is running low, right? I'm sure you're feeling the same. Um, and we have to be very mindful and conscious about where we're spending our time and energy, especially if you've got kids in the household and your routine has changed. Um, it's really important for us to think about where we're spending our time and energy and, and to not rush into things, right? But to be still open-minded uh, enough to think about our creativity, think about opportunities, and think about what we may have control over versus what we're worrying about right in the future right worrying doesn't get us anywhere but being in a place of calm you know and not panic uh we can make better decisions and we can potentially be creating new ideas from a place of desire rather than a place of um urgency and panic so i wanted to say that because i know so many people out there are sort of might be putting on social media, like if you're not doing something and building a business right away, you know, you're lazy and you're not, uh, you, you would have never done it anyway. And there's a lot of shame marketing going on right now in the world, which I'm not happy with, but at the same time, we can choose what we want to listen to and choose what it is that we want to absorb, right? As information. But I also want you to know, since you're in this webinar, all about creation, I also want you to know that it's okay to consume this information, take a pause, digest it, come back to it a few weeks later, or just even do small tiny steps about dreaming and brainstorming and planning without the need to always act and have a full blown business by the end of April, right? Like it's not necessary for us to rush into things, but I do think that um, we should be um, looking at ways that we can do more for ourselves in whatever capacity that you have at the moment. So we may all be in quarantine, but our creativity doesn't have to be in a cage, right? This is a time where, interestingly enough, as I was going into lots of coaching calls last week to help my existing coaching clients to, you know, get going with new plans that maybe they didn't start 2020 with, but now are ready to be relevant for the marketplace. Um, lots of people that used to have, you know, uh, anxieties about comparing themselves to other people, you know, oh, other people are over there and I'm over here and I should be there. And there, and that caused a lot of angst for a lot of people. And funnily enough, this pandemic has caused people, everybody to start from ground zero and to experience the same thing. And that is a sense of relief 
for some of my clients and, and, and I think for potentially you as well, if you've been feeling like you have to catch up all the time to other people, and maybe that's why you may not have started the business that you've been dreaming about for however many years, right? You may not have started the steps to even entertain the idea of that you could be self-employed and independent, right? So uh, it's a very interesting time we're living in at the moment. And um, I think a, a great time as well for us to reevaluate what's important to us and what we want to prioritize. So today we're going to talk about um, a few things on how to expand your skill sets and really be using some of your gifts and your talents and your professional experiences and your personal experiences to be able to help others and potentially be able to um, add an income stream to your household or you know, add an income stream to your existing business if you've started one, right? Uh, but we're really trying to identify opportunities to increase your earning potential and start thinking about ways that if you were to, if you were worried about your job security, if you were worried about what could happen down the road, this could be a way for you to just have that autonomy over those choices uh, and to be able to plan for new possibilities with independent work, right? Get the wheels turning a bit of what it is that you can do that is going to be simple, that's going to be helpful right now, and it's going to be something that isn't, um, you know, that it's going to be a lot more in alignment with your strengths and your skill sets rather than going out there and trying to find an idea in the world, you know, the crazy wild, wild west of the world, the, the, the internet, right? And really go within yourself and get internally, uh, uh, you know, rich with insight uh, that's going to allow you to think about what it is that you're able to do right now. So why, why do I want to talk about a service-based business? Well, Service-based businesses, in my opinion, of you know, coaching people for the last almost seven years of my, my own coaching business uh, and my practice, is that services are easy to start because it requires you as the asset, right? Your advice, your experience, your perspective, your approach, and your strategies of what you may have accomplished in the past, professionally or personally, and be able to offer that right from the get-go, right? You don't need to invest money into creating a product. Your product is you, right? And it's much easier to start this kind of business um, than potentially a brick and mortar business, which obviously is non-existent at the moment anyway. Uh, and it doesn't require uh, a huge amount of investment in order to start this kind of business. And also to be honest, in my opinion, you know, the world needs more human-based businesses. We, we need people still. Robots and AI and bots cannot help solve problems that are human-based. People still need strategists. People still need consultants. People still need a thinker, you know, that can empathize with their human conditions and be able to offer services human to human, you know? So people still need services right now and people need support right now more than ever. And I think if you are looking to contribute value into the economy during this time, especially during the time of COVID-19, um, there could be some really, really creative and um, valuable ways for you to be supporting people right now. So I really believe that every act of business is an act, can be an act of service and love. We need each other right now to survive. We are lacking the access to services and businesses that we used to go to potentially physically. And now we are forced to still need to solve problems, but doing it from home, right? And so even though I know some people have been quite afraid of uh, saying, you know, is it the right time to start a business when potentially the, ec the economy might be crashing? And the answer is we don't know where the economy is gonna go, right? And in my opinion, people still have needs and they still have um, problems that they need solving right now. And the problems could be different. And this is where creatively adapting what it is that you know how to do, right, for people's world, right, people's uh, reality right now is going to be really important to be relevant in the marketplace right now. The other intention of why this is an important webinar for me to run is, you know, I'm reminded of uh, something that my colleague and friend and previous coach has said, uh, her name's Pamela Slim, if you ever heard of her, she's awesome. And she wrote the book called uh, Escape from Cubicle Nation, one of the first books I ever read eight, nine years ago that also kickstarted my own journey. 
Um, and she talks a lot about how we can, you know, creatively be employable under any circumstance, right? How do we create the skills and learn the skills to be employable under any circumstance? So we're not afraid when we get laid off, when we're not afraid if we no longer jive with our bosses or the projects that we used to jive with and now may want to do something different. We have that toolkit to be able to adapt, to evolve our work, to grow our body of work to wherever we want it to go. And that skill set to be employable is a huge one that I think everybody needs right now to feel in control of their own financial stability, right? And their earning potential. Seth Godin talked about this a lot as well in his book, Lynchpin. If you haven't read that book, it's also an excellent read right now for you. Uh, and he talks a lot about how to be indispensable, right? Very similar to Pam Slim's How to Be Employable, right? And even if you're working in an organization right now, or if you're even a consultant right now for a business, right? Um, being able to evolve your role to be indispensable, to be more valuable than what it is that they think they hired you for is going to allow them to prioritize paying someone like you. It's going to prioritize that no one can really replace this person because there's so much more than what it is that they're hired for. And that is the type of creativity and value adds that's really necessary for service-based people right now, wherever you are, you know, in starting a business or as you continue to grow your business right now. So during this time, we're all, as I said, working from home and there's some interesting insights we can learn about ourselves. Like I've been thinking about this time a lot with um, using it for a self-assessment, right? A lot of times we are not assessing things about ourselves and getting to know ourselves that well because we are in a bit of a routine, right? We go to work, the same way, we eat the same breakfast, we see the same people, we do the same job, we go to the gym after, right? Whatever it is, is your ritual and your routine. Sometimes there's no spaciousness to evaluate your life, to think about what it is that you are, you know, um, wanting to achieve or wanting to create for yourself that is not in your daily normal life. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to be in the space of time and the ability and potentially some capacity as we figure out how things work, right? As we work from home, uh, to be able to use this time, like, you know, we're no longer commuting for hours on end a day to get to our jobs. We're no longer distracted by life because we are in the space we're in and we have a bit more control over what we want to spend our time on and not have to clock in and clock out for things, right? And so in this time, you can really be using this time for self-assessment by looking at things like learning how you like to work. So as you're working your jobs, as you're doing whatever things you're doing at home right now in your um, employment situation, right? You don't have a, someone looking over your shoulder. You don't have, you know, messy meetings that you have to attend. Um, you can really self analyze, you know, maybe do that at the end of every week on, hey, these are the types of projects I've been really good at. And when I spend time doing those things only, I'm really loving it. That brings me a lot of joy. When I'm doing these other technical skills, I'm not so happy, right? You can sort of start to even assess your own, your own role right now in the company of what it is you love to do and what it is that you don't like to do. You can also learn about how you're most productive, right? Like right now, because you get to structure your days, you get to know when you take breaks. You might be someone that needs breaks on the hour, every hour on the top of every hour. I'm someone that uh, loves sprints, so I can get a lot done in a matter of two hour sprint, and then I take a two hour break, and then I come back to it, and I just get a lot more done that way. And in a lot of ways, that sort of, um, you know, that, that sort of like look into your schedule, like where are the times of the day you're best suited to work? How many hours of work are you actually, you know, once you hit that limit, you're, you're, you're done, you know, and you're not as productive. Um, what are the, what's the approach to work that is really good for you right now, you know, that allows you to um, do more with, in a less amount of time, right? So you can really start to think about where it is that you can really shift the way you work in order to be productive. Now, all these things are really good information and data for negotiation techniques in the future. So for example, one of the big things I work on with clients is helping them negotiate remote work or shift their role to a consultancy role with existing, uh, with their existing employer right now. And in that sense, it, sometimes it can be a bit harder because you have to actually negotiate, hey, can we do a trial period for three months and convince the boss that you can do this and so forth, 
right now, there's no convincing. All of us are working from home and you can use this time to really, you know, almost get evidence of how you can actually get things done properly, where you are most productive and how you actually don't need to be in the office to accomplish results, right? And so in a lot of ways, you can be using this time as a negotiation technique in the future. Let's say if three, four months down the road, we're back in the office and you're like, you know what? I can't imagine my days not being, uh, being in the office again. I, have, I wanna be able to you know, go and, and ensure that I can still earn a living from a flexibility of, a, of working hours. This could be that data you could present to your boss. This could be a way to actually negotiate which projects you're best suited for where your best where they can best utilize your time and where they can actually save more money potentially by having you really focused on specific types of projects or a specific kind of role in order to leverage your talents right that is also an excellent opportunity right now uh, this time is also a time for you to potentially be exploring passions and deep interests right that maybe you've been thinking about starting as a business thinking about starting as a side hustle uh, and you haven't just had the time to do that. And, and this could be, again, an opportunity for you to test ideas without the pressure to launch right away, without the pressure that you have to keep up with the Joneses of some other business owner, right? You can kind of do it at your own time. Uh, as I said, all of us are in a holding pattern anyway, so might as well use our time for good right now. So I want to go a little bit into um, a couple of different types of leaps, you know? So when we leap from the cubicle, to something different, I found that there's sort of two types of leaps that might require two different approaches. So one of them is called the lateral leap and the other one is called a faith leap. Now let me explain that a little bit better and just give you some context about what to expect for both types, types of leaps. Lateral leap is pretty much when you are transitioning from a type of industry or a sector or um, you know a job type, right? That you actually quite love the job. You may not just you might not love the working environment, right? But you actually really love what you do, and so you're not changing up your skill sets, right? Or bringing old ones to the surface. Now you're actually still continuing to be who you are, still with the same skill sets and experience, except you're just going to do it for yourself now. You're going to just be your own boss and be self-employed with the same skill sets that you're leaving your corporate background with. A faith leap is something that actually I started with. Actually, no, that's a, let me rewind. I started with a lateral leap, which is actually, I became a consultant for the international education industry. That was my first business. And then I realized I was like, oh, I don't really like this industry at all. And then I started a side business called Screw the Cubicle, which is now obviously my full-time business. That was a faith leap. That was something that I didn't really yet know what I was doing, but I felt passionate to share. And uh, I did it by starting a blog, nothing fancy, just documenting my own identity crisis, going from corporate to entrepreneurship, and just started sharing my experiences, starting to share my learnings until somebody started to ask me if I coached other people and I had to actually figure out what it was to coach and how could I coach in my own way. So I've in a way started with both type of leaps, but lateral leaps are sometimes the easiest for people to start with because they already know what to do. They're just kind of doing it in a different format, right? As a self-employed person. And then faith leaps are things that you are deeply interested about. Um, you could be maybe solving lots of problems in your own personal life. So I've got clients, for example, that um, are moms that you know, know how to raise special needs kids. And that's not something they've been paid to do before, but it falls under the faith leap category because they've, they have passion and they have an interest to teach what they know, but they haven't actually maybe had an experience to be paid to do it. So there's kind of a different approach of how they would test that idea. Right? But there's no right or wrong to both leaps, but knowing what each leap is might um, you know, prompt you to know what it is that you might need to do next. With lateral leaps, you are really um, thinking about, you know, with lateral leapers, I find that it's really important as a first step to really think about like or even listing the job that you do right now, what you really do in that job, right? What do you know how to do? What problems you know how to solve? What soft and hard skills you bring to the table for that role? And start to take an inventory first about what, how you do your job properly and try to isolate the parts of the work that you actually really enjoy. Because a lot of times what I find is that people have job titles, but there's 80% a, a, a of the job they really like could rather not deal with again. And then there's like 20% of that job role where, hey, they started the industry wanting to do just that. 
and then it became kind of messy with all the bureaucracy and additional things they had to do. But take that time to evaluate what parts of the job that you want, like kind of picking your piece, and then thinking a little bit about how you can bring value to the marketplace with what you know how to do, and is the audience going to change for you? Are you going to work for the same types of businesses, or are you potentially you know, uh, evolving your work to serve a different market? And if that is true, what, what's that market look like and what are those needs and how will your skill set help support people to results in that marketplace, all right, or in that niche? So that's a really good first step for lateral leapers. And for faith leaps, it's really just actually exploration and thinking a little bit about, because if you've never done it as an earning, you know, job before, you want to actually just start helping you know, as much as possible to evaluate how it is that you help because you may not have a past history of experience doing it for other people. So bringing back to that example of the, you know, uh, parents that I know that um, talk about childcare and talk about how to raise different, uh, different types of kids, right? Um, they may have been successful in learning something for like 10 years, right? Be able to, 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 to know how to do that, but they've never actually taught another parent the same approach. Right, so a really good first step for faith leapers is to start to just simply help generously, right? If you know someone else that could that could uh, uh, benefit from your valuable advice, for, or is or struggling with that problem you had ten years ago, pick those people to help generously for a certain amount of time. Give yourself that internship to really explore how you help, what concepts and philosophies are part of your work, and who are the types of people that you feel called to serve. So you don't have to start a business right away. You can actually really start a, a beta testing process in order to understand a bit more about your own knowledge and your own know-how, not just what you've done for yourself, but how that could really translate to other people needing to learn the same thing, right? And I'll talk a little bit about beta testing a little bit more uh, further on in this webinar as well. So, Wherever you may be in your leap process, whether you're a lateral leaper or a faith leaper, it is my belief that repurposing your skills is gonna be the easiest and simplest way for you to take your leap. Why repurpose your skills? Well, it's much easier to start with something you know, right? That's the logical reason, that's the first logical step. It's much harder to learn a new skill set and then learn how to be a business owner, right? Learning how to be a business owner and learning how to do business, so already a, a learning curve, is so much easier to do that learning with the, a capacity and, you know, the gifts that you can be confident about giving people. So I want to encourage you, if you believe you don't even have any ideas, is to really do that reflection, right, on what it is that you know how to do professionally and personally, because there might be some ideas that you may not have thought could be relevant, you may not have thought could be helpful, and that's a chance for us to um, simmer on that and to explore those ideas in a way that um, may allow us to pursue them and test those ideas in the near future. But repurposing your skills is going to give you the confidence to get started pretty quickly because you either have that personal experience, right, like the, just like those moms that raise special needs kids, or you already know how to do it and been paid to do it in your corporate career. And that's also much a much easier transition uh, and simpler to manage, right? Uh, and that's the idea of why repur repurposing your skills is, is a great idea for work. Now, as you've done a bit of this inventory on whether some of your personal experiences could be turned into a business or your professional experiences could be turned into a business, I want you to really start thinking about what that sweet spot could be for meaningful work. Now, if you're here and part of my community, I know that you too are valuing meaning. You don't wanna just do a job just to make an income. Like money is important to make the world go round and you know, give us the life that we want and for us and our families. But we also wanna be able to earn a living giving, like caring about something that we're doing for work. That is gonna allow you to make more money. That's gonna allow you to understand that you're contributing to something purposeful in the world. And let me tell you, meaning and purpose also gives you a lot of drive, a reason to wake up every morning and do what you do, because it, it's very, very valuable for you to do this. And you're like, I really want to be a part of this movement, or I really want to solve these sorts of problems. And it can really help 
in keeping your eyes on the prize and going through the ups and downs of being a business owner because you've got something real and grounded in your, in, in your purpose to keep going, even if the going gets tough. And the going can get tough because you're going to be trialing new things. And that's just what, it, what happens. And so we want to be able to choose ideas that are meaningful for us to pursue. So I just want to share a quick slide with you just so that I can explain this in a bit more detail. Oops, that's not it. Let me see here, stop share. Oh, I'm still learning these, obviously these technology tools. I just thought I completely logged off. <laughs> One moment here, let me share the right screen. Now, just trying to see if this is actually working. There you go, okay. I think I had it before actually as well. Let me move my camera a bit. Okay, so this is my sweet spot little diagram, okay? Just to give you an idea of what the ingredients are for uh, what is, might be your sweet spot for meaningful work, okay? So the first part is mastery. So mastery are things like your skills, right? This is why I want you to take that inventory of your skills and your experience and all that, because that's really important as your tools, right? You've got some tool belts, you've got a tool belt on, you've got a couple tools that you can use for your work. Uh, and basically a big part of sweet, your sweet spot for meaningful work is your skill set, right? Your, the type of work that leverages your most effective skills that creates the highest value for others right now today right not what you might die with as a business idea because that's going to evolve and whatever you start with today could change and be different in the future but right now i want you to just really ground yourself in what it is that you're capable to offer today what it is that you know how to do today that's much easier for you to start and accomplish rather than thinking about a forever you know gandhi moment purpose because that's not how we start we start with being purposeful right now right so as you think about your skill sets, really think about the kind of work you can do with that skill set that you really think can create the highest value for other people. It might be demands you've seen in the marketplace. It might be um, how much um, urgency people have with solving these types of problems, right? Right now we're in this right pandemic where we're all kind of starting from the same place and we know the problems that are affecting businesses and individuals. So a much, even a great time for you to really know what the problems are because, right, building a, the right business is solving the right problems. And now we're kind of put in, in, in a particular time in the world where we are really aware of the problems that are going on in the world that are being, experiencing across, that are being experienced across the board globally. So it makes it easier for you to understand problems. The second part here is deep interest, right? Uh, or your passions, right? Your work aligns with problems you're deeply interested in solving and are passionate about changing. So as you think again about your skills is how do you use those skills and right, repurpose those skills to solve a problem that you believe is going, that, that you believe you're passionate about wanting to change in the world, right? It has to be interest that I think you can, you can, um, dedicate your time to, not just for this year and just for the pandemic, oh, it's also for, you know, things that have been occurring in your life, things that you talk about a lot, things that you seem to read about a lot, you know, things that you share a lot about, that could be some good clues as to what it is that you're deeply interested in and how do you make that, you know, a really relevant uh, part of your skill set, right? Or that merging and marriage of your skills and your passions. And then the third piece here at the bottom is impact that, you know, when you can do these things, when you can solve these problems, your work has this ripple effect towards a larger purpose in the world that you're proud to contribute to, right? Where you're just one little puzzle piece of a large, right, scheme of things that has to happen to support people or the world to accomplish something bigger that's beyond yourself. You're just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to, right, that ripple effect for that, that sort of impact. And impact is a very important, um, important piece, I think, for us humans. We want to know that we're making a difference. We want to know that our work is meaningful. We want to know that it really causes change and transformation for other people. And if it doesn't do that, some of us just can't seem to wake up in the morning and do it. And that's me too, right? So we want to really think about, hey, when we try to think about these different three pieces of ingredients, how do they fit together, right? And that impact really is your mission. It's that mission, that high level why 
right? And purpose of why you do what you do that then goes into the how, right? The deep interest stuff, right? What problems you're solving, how you're gonna solve those problems, and then to the what, what skills will you use to solve those problems? So really start thinking about these three pieces. And I'll send you this to you in the replay as well, the slide, just so that you have that to brainstorm a bit on. But as you're taking that inventory for your personal experiences and your professional experiences, just, just link back your ideas to whether or not it ticks the boxes for these three parts of the diagram, right? Uh, and again, if you get really confused, you can just hit reply in that email I send you and I'm happy to help you because right now I would love to support you in choosing really great ideas that are meaningful for you. I take a sip of my coffee. Um, for example, I want to give you an example of something I was just working on with a client just to give you some context to this diagram. Uh, so for example, I had a, a client who's a great project manager and project manager is such a vague term, isn't it? Like you can do so much as a project manager. And so where we started digging into in his mastery, part of you know the ingredients for meaningful work is that actually out of everything he knows how to do as project manager one of the things he keeps repeating and he keeps owning as his own gift right and what makes him a great project manager is the ability to uh, manage his energy not his time uh, and it's also the ability to choose consciously of what are the essential things to be working on in a project rather than what is distracting him from doing his job. And he feels like his colleagues keep asking him for stuff like that because they can't seem to complete things on a deadline. And he believes that it's a mindset issue and it's also an approach because we're not trained to be very productive in an eight hour workday. We're trained to spread our productivity for eight hours when maybe we could have gotten our jobs done in two hours. So part of his skill set is actually helping people choose the right approach to finish a project, choose the right time constraints to finish a project and to help develop the mental capacity to make these decisions every single day without um, falling into the traps of other people's agendas and other people's expectations. So that makes him so much more valuable as a project manager rather than just saying, I just know how to do, you know, spreadsheets and use Asana boards, right? Like there's so much more amazing, interesting insights once we dug into what it is that made him a great project manager. And that's his mastery. Then we went into deep interests. What are the problems you want to solve with that skill set of energy management, right? Like making decisive decisions for the essentials, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the deep interests he has is actually uh, being able to ensure that, you know, these startups and organizations that value their humans that work with them are being utilized and leveraged properly, but also that these people are giving the freedom and flexibility to choose the way they want to work and be able to produce even more effectively, right? Really helping people get into that non-traditional cubicle style working potential, but actually this modern day world of how to tap into people's productivity and, 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 and tailor, right? Help people tailor their own uh, approach to getting things done that isn't going to be the same for everybody else. So that was really, you know, things that, that, made him angry were like this clock in and clock out culture and also you know where people just felt that you know they, the only way that people will be productive if if they're in the office and someone's watching over them and he hated that in as part of his own company culture and he wanted to change that for organizations that were open to that change right that would serve the employee and also give back to the employer's bottom line so that was his deep interest that he was linking his skills to solve and then in the way of impact if I asked him, you know, why do you want to do that? Why is it so important for you? How will the world change if you could have things your way? He was like, you know what? We are then less going to be in the cubicle, right? And we're going to embrace remote work. We're going to embrace flexibility and independence where people are no longer drudgingly going to work. They are really spending time on things they care about. And they're doing it in a way that allows them to just have more time for life. Right. And that impact, again, that bigger purpose allows him to really own in on that value and then find the right clients that also value that. And that's also very insightful for him to do that exercise in order to know what kind of startups, what kind of businesses, what kind of independent contractors he's actually really trying to attract to his business. So hopefully that gives you not only the breakdown of the ingredients, but it also gave you some context, right, to how to use that Venn diagram 
for meaningful work with that example there. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. So make sure when you watch the replay and get that email for this video, shoot me a reply and let me know how you get on with that exercise as well. So the biggest piece I hope that you you also come up come out with this webinar, uh, you know, with is is to solve relevant problems, solve problems that people care about, solve problems that you care about, right? Uh, some passions are not meant to be monetized. So if you're looking at some of your deep interests right now, and when you're taking that list of inventory of your ideas, it's like some passions are just like great for you, you have fun doing it, but you want to also link it to a demand, right? Link it to some occurring urgent problems the world needs and what is being um, what's happening and occurring in the world right now. And so being relevant is really important to the marketplace more than ever because people are buying what's essential and people are buying what they need. Uh, and the way you talk about your services and the way that you talk about how you help in your business is going to be really important to help people to understand why you're valuable and why they do need you. And you're not just a one trick pony, right? For just a, a particular job title or a particular technical skill, right? You wanna be a lot more valuable in the way that you express and articulate your skills and your strengths. And when you talk about your, the problems you solve and when you talk about the impact you're making with your work and how it, in a general larger way, it really supports people to do even more, to have better results or better outcomes for their goals. That's when people are gonna to start to buy into why your services are really important to their world right now, okay? So solve relevant problems, focus on problems to solve because that's what a business is built to do, to solve problems. And you're, if you're unsure about what problems you should be solving, I want to end this webinar by talking a little bit about how to test and validate right now with your ideas that can potentially have you starting a side business or a side hustle, even if you're full time working at the moment. OK, so how do we know what problems to solve? You can either know by experience and some people were like, yep, I already know exactly what it is that I'm most meaningful wanting to solve. And then there's some of us that need a bit more data and that's OK. And that's what you want to do is that don't be afraid to start asking questions. So if you know anyone in your world right now that is suffering from a particular problem that you're like, I have already went, went through that, or I know how to do something that's going to solve their problem, get them on a phone call, right? Get them on a Zoom call like this, right? Get them on, get a real phone call on WhatsApp, right? And start to ask them what's going on in their reality, in their world. Talk about not just the level one of what pains them every single day, Start asking them why they think that's a problem area. What have they tried before? If they had a magic wand, what are some solutions that they wish they could be having right now? Or what would they wish to learn to be able to solve their own problem? Or what is that they might be diagnosing themselves that could be a gap of knowledge or a gap of experience that they need support on to be able to move forward with a problem that they have. So, Having these human conversations has been really important for us not to feel lonely in isolation, but it's also really important for us as business owners or soon to be business owners that are needing to, to, to get the human experience down packed in order to know what it is that we can be creating as service-based providers to solve relevant problems. So if you're guessing, it, you may want to make sure that your guesses are right by the validation with, with the power of asking and feedback. Don't be afraid to pick up the call. And what I like to do, which is a tip, I like to do something called a 30 for 30, which has worked really well for people that you know, feel bad about asking people for their time, is you could approach it as like, hey, let's do an hour call. I'm gonna do a 30 for 30 exchange. And what that means is that I would love to pick your brain for 30 minutes on this particular problem that I've been kind of you know, interested to solve as potentially an, uh, a business or as someone who might be offering this as a service in the future. And it feels like you might be someone that could give me some insights about what's going on in your life right now. So I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit on a conversation and then we'll reserve the last 30 minutes of our time where you can ask me questions and I'm more than happy to give you my professional head and maybe help you solve some problems in 30 minutes, right? So you're giving something and you're, you're asking and giving at the same time. And I think that nice approach of a 30, 30 for 30 can really, um, get you to start asking questions generously as well, right? Um, and with those questions, you're really gaining insight to what it is that you might need to create as a service or how you might create that service and what problems do you need to account for in that process of offering that service that can really get your clients and potential clients to 
outcomes that they mentioned they really would buy, right? Or they really would be on board for. The next step about that is really getting into uh, what I call the beta test process, right? The testing and validation of a beta test uh, is really, really great because a lot of people skip this part. And I tell you, if you were to spend some time and energy on creating a beta test campaign for yourself before you launch a business, before you offer anything for sale, is you're going to start to gain, first of all, confidence in knowing what the hell you're selling and how to sell it from a real human experience. A beta test is when you work with humans one-on-one for free or for a low price, depending on what you're comfortable with and where your, your, where your experience may lie. Um, but the whole premise is that you are giving yourself a test run about how it feels to do that service, to perform that service, to help people through those hurdles and give yourself a little bit of space to make mistakes. And you can definitely tell your beta testers that this is what's going on. You're a bit of a trial bunny, but you're going to get my attention, my full, my full focus, and we're going to make sure we get you there eventually. But it is part of an exchange, right? You're exchanging uh, your advice to people and your experience to help people through something. And they're exchanging their feedback and their testimonials for your work when it's relevant. So this benefit of a beta test allows you to have some testimonials before you launch, especially if you've done it with a number of people. It allows you to, to, to do more than one test run. So you're figuring out like what is consistently needing to be done with your clients in your service. You're understanding your own framework, like how this you get people from A to B, right? You know what are the consistent steps and processes that you might have to build a system around in order to do it repeatedly with every client so that every client gets to the same results and you get to understand a bit of structure around your service so that people are buying that structure. They're buying that solution as a system rather than just buying your hour by hour time. That's going to be extremely important on how you package your expertise into a viable service. And most importantly, it's just going to make you feel confident as a service provider because it's not going to be your first rodeo when you launch that business. You've done it before right? You've done it with real humans. You know what to expect. And I think when, then when you have a website or when you start to launch or when you start to pitch your services to businesses or individuals, there is some good data and good reasons to be hiring you because you've done it before, you know, and that's, that's why it's so important to not neglect and avoid the beta test. And what a great time to do beta testing stuff for your business when you are right now working from home and having a bit more autonomy over your time. All right, so if any of this has been really helpful for you, um, please email me and let me know that this was helpful. And if there's any other questions that you might have about repurposing your skills or starting a, a service-based business while you're still working from home, just hit reply in the email that you got to this replay, if you're watching the replay, uh, and I'm happy to answer questions for you. Now, the other way I can support you, which has been a very popular course at the moment uh, in order for people to actually start this journey on their own and be able to um, use this time to do something on their own, like, with their own time and do it slowly in a bit of a self-guided process uh, is where you can see this. Let me just make sure to get my camera out of the way. Um, this is my work reinvented course that I created last summer, which is one of my best courses to help to kickstart people's planning and, uh, you know, organizing their ideas for what business to start in a self-employment plan. Now, originally, this is a $197 course. And for this time period, uh, I'm not sure when I'll cut this off for the discount, but right now I feel that I need to support people to have these resources and tools. So I've put this price down to 80% off at a $39 rate that gives you uh, bite-sized videos that you can do at home and in your own pace, uh, where you can learn how to prepare your self-employment plan to understand what business to start with different exercises of figuring out what it is that is your best type of business to start right now with the skills you've got and the opportunities in the marketplace. And it's also going to help you to really plan your time and plan your priorities at home to be able to work on a side business right now. So if you go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash course, and enter in the code screw COVID, all one word, uppercase, 
you'll be able to get the Work Reinvented course for $39. There are 25 mini videos for you to go through. It's very bite-sized. It's kind of like I'm right next to you, making, uh, coaching you and supporting you along the way as you do that work. Very easy to, to digest and you can do it piece by piece as you're at home right now. What's also really great about this course is that it comes with, you can sign up for one slot of a monthly uh, Q&A session that I run every last Thursday of every month. So if you are a student of this course, you can register for one of the dates to come in on a live call with me and get some free coaching. So this is such an amazing deal. You get lifetime access to this course. You get the workbook that accompanies the videos to do your homework and keep, and you get access to me personally to support you through some of the bigger questions you might have uh, about your own circumstance, your own business ideas, and you get my time, my heart, and my brain in order to support you to do this well. Okay, so hopefully you get to join me in that course. I think it's a great one for us to do together uh, around this time, and it gives you tools, right? This toolkit that you can learn, right? Being self-employed uh, self is a learnable skill right? And I know that you already have skills. It's just about how we can use that to be independent and how it is that you can reposition a lot of the years of experience that you know how to do things. You don't have to throw that experience out the window and be able to use it uh, to create financial stability for yourself, whether you need it now or whether you need it in the near future, okay? Or whether or not being a creative business owner is, has always been a goal for you. All right, I hope that this uh, workshop has been really valuable to you to just kickstart some ideas, to really think about the process of what you can be doing right now to um, use your time for good, right? To start a service-based business and do something creative that post-pandemic, you can walk out of this home <laughs> that you've been in for several months or several weeks now uh, and have something that you're excited about and have something that is your very own, which I think is important for our well-being as well. And as usual, I'm always looking for um, ideas and your votes on what it is that you want me to teach uh, as we work together every single week in these in this free webinar sessions. Uh, so just hit reply again to that email if you got this replay by email. And let me know what is a topic that might have spurt, you know, like come up for you today. Uh, and you might want me to invest time in teaching you for the next coming weeks. And I'm happy to dedicate one of the webinars to your questions. Um, hope you guys are staying sane and productive and taking any deep pauses that feels right for you right now. We are in this together. We need each other. Uh, and I'm so very glad that I get to do this for you every single week. And a last reminder, if you're looking for what's going on for next week, um, go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars, there's an S, and you'll see the replays that you can sign up for for past webinars. And you can also sign up for next, week, next week's webinar, which is how do we adapt our skills to the online world? This is another vote, large vote for the community that people want to learn. I've got some skill sets. Maybe I used to teach before or I am currently teaching, or I used to be a project manager, or I am a project manager, or I have these skill sets I'm doing right now, but how do I really envision being able to offer value and give value and be really effective in the work I'm doing by offering it to a virtual world, right? A virtual way. Uh, and so I'm going to be sharing some examples next week of how to do that, uh, as well as uh, give you the tools and the resources to be able to connect with audiences globally and not feel that you have to be right where they are to be able to offer your best work and offer effective value to people who need you. So I can't wait to see you for that one. You can sign up for that one at screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars as well. Thanks so much, you guys, for joining me today. And I can't wait to see you next week. Uh, stay strong, uh, stay sane. Uh, and hopefully you're feeling grounded as well as we uh, get to a new normal in this reality we're sharing together. Have a great rest of your night and your day, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.